Welcome to KOEM Presents, a podcast produced by KOEM News Now and the four states' most watched news team. If you're a weekend warrior who likes to go, 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 don't let pain put the brakes on your pace. When you need help with an injury that keeps you from moving, you want an orthopedic team with a proven track record. Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine is nationally recognized and were recently named a 2018 CareCheck's number one hospital in market and top 10% hospital in state for hip fracture repair. Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the experience you need to keep pace with life. Welcome back, another episode, episode eight. And you can see we have another guest. I'm not sure if you're a face, the, the people of the four states recognize. Probably not. Well, I was always more of a behind the scenes Behind guy. the scenes guy. This is a KOM vet, Kyle Anderson, joining us today. And obviously, Doug Hetty with his coffee. Mm -hmm. What kind today? Uh, Americano. Americano. Classic. Mm -hmm. uh, Kyle, if you want to kind of tell the people a little bit of your background, and then we'll kind of get into it. Uh, started at KOM in 1999. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... A while uh, ago. A little bit, a little while ago. I uh, started as a news assistant when I was going to Pitt State. And uh, through the years, I've worked up from uh, news assistant to, uh, I was a photographer, chief photographer, news operations. And uh, so I've done a little bit of everything, and including storm chasing for KOM over the years. And that's the big one today, storm yep. chasing. And I, like a fool, came in here and, I, you know, I was giving them a rundown of how stuff was going. And I was like, you know, I, I know you have some experience. And he's like, oh, 23 years. Yep. So just, just a little, yeah, a little, little bit, bit of experience. Yeah. Um, and so that was basically started when you were with KOM. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, I was the kind of kid though that my whole childhood, I was the kid that would go stand out on the front of the porch and just watch it. Like I've always been kind of infatuated with just weather. Yeah. I just love it. And so it was an easy transition when I got the opportunity to work at the TV station to just gravitate towards what can I do with weather. And did you ever want to be like, because I mean, you've always been fascinated with weather, but was a storm chaser something in like your, your scope, you know? Yeah. You know? I mean, I used to chase a lot in college. Really? So, I mean, back then the Big 12. So, you know, we would take at KU like two weeks every year and we'd storm chase mm -hmm. in the spring and we'd combine with like OU and uh, Texas A&M. And so I, I'm the same age as Reed Timmer. He's one of the most popular storm yeah. chaser so i got to chase with him before he was reed timmer and he was crazy back then but uh yeah when i started here i'd only worked here like five months and then we had the may 4th 03 mm -hmm. which is sunday so it was kyle and i and um you know so we we knew it was gonna happen so we both came in and it was like two o'clock in the afternoon and we're just we're staring at the radar watching the radar sweep going circles Nothing, nothing. Then we got one little dot, and I was like, go. And, I mean, <laughs> we had a huge day that day. And that's what he was talking That was one of your more, like, memorable. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that day was, uh, like he was talking about, I remember I was driving, when as soon as that dot hit, I literally jumped in the car, and I took off. And, it, and I mean, before I almost got out of the building, it was on the ground in Girard. Yeah. And so he told me, he was, we were communicating back and forth, and he said, you know, just head that direction. And I, I drove uh, in between Pittsburgh and Girard, and I remember talking to him, and I'm like, I see a lowering, a, a dark, you know, and he's like, you're looking at it. You're looking at it. Well, there was a huge tree line. And so I was like, I can't confirm. I, I don't know. And he said, dude, that's it. And I, as soon as I came out from behind that tree line, it was right in front of me. I'm talking right in front of me. And I still so, remember that video. It was insane. Yeah. And you were recording. How close like, were you recording? I was, I mean, oh, man, it's, I don't even want to tell people. But, I mean, I was probably, <laughs> I was within 100, 150 yards of that tornado. Oh, my gosh. It was uh, a big boy. And, it was a, and, and by yeah. the time I got to it, it was, it was chugging. And so I got on it, and I actually watched it hit Franklin. And then I actually was driving, and there was a T in the road. And I either mm -hmm. I had a choice to make, either turn and go into it or turn away from it, obviously. And so um, at that point, it was moving 45, 50 miles an hour. So I knew once it, I hit that T, it, I wasn't going to catch it again. Yeah. And then at that time, my wife, uh, she was at work that day, and she called me. And I was so obviously kind of concentrating on the tornado that was right in front of me that I wasn't really paying attention to what was behind me. And my wife called and said, hey, there's another one in Cherokee County and it looks like it's going right towards our house. And at that time, my one-year-old son, Austin, was at home with my grand grandparents. So I turn around and I'm flying, trying to get home. And I actually run into that tornado 
and I had to let it go through so I could go in behind it and, and just check. Waiting. Right. Oh my God. And this, this is back in the chasing days when storm chasers, they didn't have radar. No. I mean, they're just flying blind. Yeah. Just so, phone calls. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh, like, so, don't go that way. Don't go that way. No. So. And I, <laughs> as a matter of fact, I mean, when I first started this, it was so there no internet, no cell phones. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you did have a cell phone, it only picked up in, in Joplin, Pittsburgh. Like when you got rural, like no, you know. Yeah. So I remember I had a little 13 inch color TV <laughs> that I, I would prop right there, you know, plug it in the cigarette lighter and I would have rabbit ears. And the only way that I could tell what was happening is I, if I could see him on air. But when you would get out towards Chinook, Independence, headed towards Tulsa, mm -hmm. or whatever, when you go to the Western part, I had no signal. So I literally had no way i had no way of knowing anything that was going on and you said like most of the time you were already way out there right i would always try to get to our western counties because i always wanted to be on the storm when it hit our viewing area but when you're on the western edge of our viewing area you can't always get a signal mm -hmm. and still so, can't sometimes yeah, still can't. <laughs> <laughs> so, working on that i mean we didn't have cell phones i had no radar i had, so i would listen to the radio and then the radio the weather radio would tell me hey they've just issued a warning for whatever and I would just take off running towards that warning and I would try to find it. I would get on it and then I would stay with it until I could finally get a TV a signal to watch what Doug was saying. And, um, and if you go back and look, there was, I, I distinctly remember one time Doug was talking to me on air and um, I had phoned in and I said, hey, I'm at such and such location. And I had said mm -hmm. 171 and he thought I said 71. And so he was like, all right, Kyle, you're in a great spot. It's coming right out, you know. And then I told the producer, I said, no, 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 I'm on 171. And you can hug, you can hear Doug on air. He's like, Kyle, you're in a terrible spot. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you need to get out of there. <laughs> um, but that was one of those things where I was, like, just waiting, like, yeah, you know, just waiting to hear what Doug said. And he told me, like, get out. And so it, it's the technology in the last 20 years, it's, it's not even the same. It's yeah. completely different. As far as like communicating and actually being able to see ahead of time, like on your laptop. And so like when you're chasing, essentially, even especially back in the day, like how cognizant do you have to be? Like how aware are you? Like what street am I going to take to make sure it doesn't wrap back around towards me or something? Like how do you kind of navigate that? Well, it's funny because th this is the... Um, this is one of the hardest, it's not hard, but this area is so contrast because if you're north of I-44 and you're mm -hmm. up into the Kansas side, you get mile sections. And so there's a real nice grid, wide, flat, open spaces. It's great. I mean, I know I've, I've just got a mile here and I can get right. I know a mile here I can get north. But I-44, you get south of that and all of a sudden you start to get in the rolling hills, you lose the, the mile grid, mm -hmm. and it is a completely different chase. Um, anytime I go south of I-44, it, it changes everything. It, it a little more nervous because you just visually can't, you can't always see what, what you're trying to look for and you don't have always the best ways to escape to get out. So Do you try to plan like escape routes depending on like what Doug or like the weather radio is kind of telling you or? Yeah, once we know like what way that storm's tracking, which most of them are east, northeast direction. So at that point, if you know that you're, you know, for us, if we're staying on the south side, southeast side mm -hmm. and giving it a little bit of distance, um, you know you're, you're in a pretty good spot. Um, mm -hmm. We just know that we don't ever want to get to a place that's a dead end where if it happens to start to make that little right turn, we have no place to go, you know. Is that pretty common? With yeah. Like, I, I mean, mean the, the Joplin way? tornado turned right, you know, at the end it hugged right and went across I-44. A lot of them do, but the problem is with the bigger tornadoes, they book. I mean, a lot of them will move 60, 65, so if you're trying to keep up with it on country roads, it's hard. It's in, like... Do they gain speed? Uh, and I don't know actually kind of how they're tracking, but like, do they gain speed? Do they start to slow down as they lose momentum? No, they, they usually just, just book. I just mean, the entire time. Yeah, kinda. until they get out of the instability and then die. Oh, man. But uh, I mean, like like today, we're, we're taping this on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if, so that we have a dry line coming in and if the cap would break, which it doesn't look like it's gonna break, this would be a setup where you get big tornadoes and they move it. 50 or 60 Man. so they're just they're real fast and a lot can happen yeah. in a short amount of time Great question we'll take a quick break um you just mentioned cap and that's something i don't really know like for people who are listening you know what is the cap or what is a cap uh it's a cap or lid uh, it's a warm layer of air aloft so several thousand feet usually uh, ten thousand feet 
I mean, so way up there. So when storms try to build, they build vertically, mm -hmm. and they hit that area of air, and they, it, they can't do it. They can't get through it. So it's similar to if you have a Coke bottle, shake it up. You don't want to take the cap off, do you? <laughs> no. As long as the cap's on, that's, you're fine. But if you take that cap off, everything explodes. So it's real hard to get through that cap. But once storms do get through it, if they actually get through the cap, they're, uh, they're going to be big. Is a cap always present, or is it just like um, a spring season thing? You know, it depends on the situation. Oh, okay. So, I mean, in the spring, we usually get highly capped environments, and then that's why we get so much severe weather, because mm -hmm. it takes so much energy to get through it. Uh, it. Once you get to the summer, you know, we get all those nighttime big storms that come through mm -hmm. with the heavy rain. No cap, because it's so warm from the surface all the way up. Yeah. So, but in spring, there's a bigger temperature contrast, so you get those layers of warmer air, cooler air. Caps and layers. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll take a quick break. Be right back. At Grand Lake Casino, you get more points, more free play, and better rewards. Play at the casino where friends play. Grand Lake Casino, Highway 10 north of Grove, Oklahoma. Check them out online at grandlakecasino.com. Make your home more comfortable with help from Derailed Commodity. Update your flooring with the area's largest selection of in-stock carpet, luxury vinyl plank, tile, area rugs, and more in many styles, brands, and colors. New furniture always brightens a home. We have a great in-store selection, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium in stock and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local Derailed Commodity Flooring and Furniture with stores in Brazelton and Independence, Kansas, and Joplin and Butler, Missouri. Welcome back. We are still talking even through the break and we realized we didn't take it even far enough back to your very first, very, very experienced person. Not at all. Yeah, this, <laughs> no. this is before I got here. So was, was Bickford the chief or was it Daniel at that time? I think that was, uh, that was Bickford, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Dan's the one that got me he actually kind of took me under the, he, he just could tell I liked weather. And so yeah. he's the one that actually, back then we did the Strong Skies Tour. Okay. And so he would take me to do all that stuff. And, and he actually started working with me. He's an OU guy. So I'm a KU guy, so I prefer Doug. Yeah. <laughs> but no. And what year was it? That was 99? I started in 99. Okay. This is in 2000. Okay. So, yeah. And that, that day, um, I was a news assistant. And I wasn't supposed to touch the camera gear. I was, you know. And, um. The sports guys had been sneaking me out at night when all the bosses would leave and they were teaching me how to shoot sports because they wanted another mm -hmm. sports shooter. Actually, one of them was Michael Hayslips, still here. <laughs> and so they were sneaking me out at night and I was learning how to shoot like baseball, softball and stuff like that. And so one night there was a story uh, and it was that Rudy Rudiger, the, the movie Rudy. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was in Pittsburgh giving a, a talk that night and I begged one of our producers. I said, can I, I, I love that movie. Can I go meet that guy? Can I just go shoot the story? And he was like, whatever, you know, and he <laughs> let me go. And so I was so excited because it was the first time I'd ever shot news. And I thought, man, I did such a great job. I got the interview. And I remember walking in the back door and our producer's name is Chris Replogle. And he was already kind of a high energy, kind of wired pretty. Yeah. And he's just running down the hallway, just screaming. And I'm like, what in the world? And he's like, do you have the camera in the car? And I was like, yeah, yeah well, what? And he goes, dude, there's a tornado that just hit Parsons. Go. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. So I jumped back in the car and I have no clue what I'm doing especially at night. That's a whole different thing when oh, you're using yeah. a camera at night. The settings are all different. I didn't have lights. Hmm. And so I just took off driving. And that was April 19, 2000. And uh, I think it was an F3 tornado. That hit a carnival, uh, a movie theater. Um, wow. Unbelievably, I, I don't believe there was any fatalities in that tornado, hmm. but it was um, amazing how much damage it did. But I was out all night and I was using my car lights on my, my car to be able to light stuff and then shoot video. And uh, that was the first time I ever went out on a tornado. And the first thing I ever shot actually ended up going to network, which wow. is just ridiculous. But Especially your first time. First time. And with the lack of communication back then, like did it, no one knew where you were Nothing. until you got back. Nothing. So there was no communication. It was literally, uh, they would send you out, you would gather stuff. And the hope was that you would get back to put something together for the morning show. Wow. But they, I mean, when you walked in, they would literally, the first question, what do you, what do you have? And they, would, they wouldn't know. There was, there was no communication to know even what kind of news you had or nothing. Different time. We were I was in Lawrence at that time. Oh, yeah. I worked uh, at the little TV station in Lawrence. I was in college. And they sent me down here I think, the next day. And so I remember driving down with a photog. And I think there was a second smaller tornado north near Erie. Yep. Because I remember we went through two damage paths. Mm -hmm. And then I shot some stuff in Parsons and then went back not knowing I would work in this market just two years later. 
So, yeah, but it, I remember seeing the damage firsthand. It was bad. Yeah. So. I mean, there's been so many different yeah. events oh, yeah. through this area. Yeah. Um, like we were saying, like how not lawless, obviously, you have to abide by r driving laws and stuff, but like the, the storm chaser crowd, can, you get the whole gambit of personalities. Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's you know, when I first started, it, it really was science. It was guys that yeah. were involved in the science aspect of it. And it would be nothing for me to, when I would head to the, you know, down towards Tulsa, uh, there was times that I saw Reed, I saw the Dominator. We'd, mm -hmm. like, we'd all kind of bunch up. You'd see uh, Tulsa, you'd see Wichita, maybe Oklahoma City would even come this far depending on how big they thought the event was going to be. But it really was, I mean, a lot of guys that were doing it for, you know, professional reasons for. Yeah. That's gone. <laughs> Those yeah. days are gone. <laughs> I mean, you can get to a place now and there can be, there are 30, 40 cars lined up. And, wow. uh, and it's, it's novice guys. I mean, you don't, you don't want to say that um, they're not professional or whatever. S some are, some are. Uh, I guess for me, it's just more of just, um, it can, if you don't know what you're doing, it can, it can be extremely dangerous. Oh, no doubt. So, um, and in, in your kind of professional circle, do you guys communicate with each other still? Be like, hey, I was just here. Other than, you know, communicating with Doug or any meteorologist, do you guys kind of talk amongst each other? Really, when you're out there, um, one of the things is you just kind of, a lot of times you find the caravan. Because most guys, if they know what they're doing, are going to be in about the exact same spot. Really, yeah. And so when I head that way, as a matter of fact, if, if it's a pretty good size event and I don't see anybody around, I'm in the wrong spot. <laughs> uh, that's a pretty good indicator that yeah. you're, you're wrong. Um, so we'll still get in those caravans, but when the, when it's kind of happening, it's it's quick. You know, like we were talking about when a storm's moving 45, 50 miles an hour, there's not a lot of time to just pull over, sit, and, and hang out. You're staying with that cell. Very I mean, active. You're going. Yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, it's even, uh, if you stop to go to the gas station, you're probably done chasing for the day because yeah. that, that thing's gone. You, you can't know? really catch up to it. No. How far ahead do you, because you say you kind of stay behind it, but then like, what is your rule of thumb? Like, I want to be within like X amount of miles or is it just kind of you feel it out? Yeah, I mean, to More me like it's- X just, amount of yards. It's, it's, <laughs> it's pretty, because here's the thing, and, and it's funny you should say that, but you know, when you're on those cells, they can look. I mean, from a, a distance, you see scud clouds and low hangers and, and things happening where visually you're like, man, that, that is definitely a funnel. That is, yeah. that's on the ground. And then as you get closer, you're like, nope, it's not touching the ground. And there's a lot of people that make that mistake. They'll, they'll see those scuds, they'll, you know, swirling around and, oh yeah, there's a tornado, there's a tornado. And uh, if you're two miles away, you can't, you can't really say that. And so you have to get close enough to visually be able to go, no, that's on the ground. Wow. Do you so. field some of those comments of people be like, I definitely saw one, but you're like, I mean, maybe it was some rotation. Yeah, like or we, we, I got sent just the storms are at Sunday night. Um, oh yeah. You know, some low hanging clouds that they thought, you know, why wasn't this tornado warning? And it was just scud. It's just scary looking clouds, not really moving. We had a little mid-level rotation at times, but we had nothing in lower levels. But a lot of times, yeah, well, I'll get pictures all the time where people think it's a funnel or it's mm -hmm. rotating or even clouds can lower and hang and it's not like a wall cloud. Yeah. So yeah, you, I mean, it, and pictures are really hard because pictures are still shot mm -hmm. and you need to see how the clouds are moving. If there's any rotation. Yeah. Yeah. And for the uneducated like myself, what is a scud? Um, it, it's just low. It's scary looking clouds. Oh, okay. It's the easiest just, way just to non scary, put yeah. it. Scary oh, okay. looking clouds. Yes. Are there any like misconceptions? You're talking about, you know, there's a lot of kind of like buzz kind of, I don't even know what the word, clickbaity, like you said, kind of clickbaity uh, storm chasers. Are there any like misconceptions about like legitimate storm chasers? Are they pretty? Uh, social media is done. It's done some bad things. Yeah, it's done some <laughs> really bad things. So, so here's here's the only thing I would say, and I made this mistake when I was was young too. Is uh, I think you talked about it's like baking a cake. Have you made that analogy before? Yeah. There's certain ingredients, and I what is it six maybe or I don't know how many ingredients yeah. there are, but you have to have all those ingredients, right? Mm -hmm. And and it, basically everything has to kind of go in and mix perfectly to be able to do that. Yeah. Well, you can come up with all kinds of models and forecast things that will give you four ingredients or three ingredients. And so you guys, you get these guys on social media and, and they will just, man, you know. It's awful. We're all getting wiped out. This is gonna be the worst yeah. outbreak. And it's, they're not, they just don't know the, the whole science behind it. Yeah. And you can take any model and grab, especially with like what's gonna happen maybe tonight, you can make it say, things if you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. And uh, I remember when I was young at this, I, I, there was times I'd come down with Doug and I'm like, dude, look, like, this is gonna be, this is it, man, look at the, and he would be like, yeah, we're missing, you know, what, shear yeah. or, 
I, capped or, you know. I see on social media, I feel like every severe weather event, historic. Yeah. I mean, every event's historic now. <laughs> every like, single one. Oh my one. gosh, here we go again. So. Never. But it's caused Doug, I think, to have to do more damage control. Yeah. He spends more time just like pumping the brakes. Pump the brakes. Yeah. Constantly. Managing those expectations as far as. Yeah. And, yeah. A good and thing. if I don't, then people ask me, why aren't you talking about this? Why aren't you talking about this? Why? Yeah. You know, and I'm like, or I always get a storm chaser will take a, you know, post something. They'll take a snapshot of it. And the most common thing I get is it ends up in my box, like mm -hmm. Facebook box. And it says, is this true? <laughs> I mean, that is a common for, is this true? And then I have to be like, well, yeah, we're watching for severe weather, but that's not true. So, yeah. I mean, I, I'll spend 30, 45 minutes a day answering questions like that. And it's just like, come on. So, and, when I'm, yeah, and yeah. when I'm training people, like, you know, because of that hype, a lot of people are like, man, every time we go out when there's severe weather, we're like, it's going to be a tornado. It's going to be, mm -hmm. I've gone out, I don't even know how many times. <laughs> And the likelihood that you're actually going to be on the right cell and experience a day that's torn out, I mean, it's just, yeah. Yeah. it just doesn't happen that often. Which is a good thing. I yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah. It's great. Yeah. Bottom line, we got to listen to the professionals and, you know, not pester you guys so much. You got to tr <laughs> trust the science, if you will. Um, I guess the last question I was kind of curious about is, do you have like a storm chaser toolkit? Like it's a thing, which granted, you know, we talked about technology's kind of changed. But maybe coming up this season, you know, what is something you're like, I'd have to have this and this, and I'm ready to rock. I guess more like your equipment. What your equipment, equipment. yeah, it's, not toolkit. No, it's, it's yeah. funny, though, because uh, I was talking to somebody earlier. You know, we used to, when we first started, we had a map, a detailed map of every county. And so we would have a stack of maps. And when we would Just flip through them. a county line, we would have to grab that map and find out we were, it was a nightmare. Nowadays, like, it's a beautiful thing. We have two main pieces of equipment that I'm going to have this year. Uh, what we call a live TV, mm -hmm. which is a pack now that satellite trucks and live trucks are pretty much gone. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what that allows us to do, which I'm really excited about, we, we tested this out a couple years ago. We got to try it one time, but we'll be able to instantly send back a live signal that Doug can instantly, real time, we can put it up on the green screen behind him and he can look at the exact same cell that I'm looking at. So he'll be able to really see, you know, how well the structure is of it all of that which is really cool mm -hmm. um there's that and now we ha we have wi-fi that'll be in our cars now so i'll have a laptop i'll have awesome. um, a couple of different tabs whether it's the radar i'll probably have um the actual signal kom signal so i can listen to everything that he's saying so broadcasting a live signal of what i'm seeing that he can take at any time um so even if we're getting golf ball size hell or whatever like you'll see it live we'll like, see it. Hey, yeah. hey guys this is what's getting ready to hit your house um which is just amazing and then, um, so between the laptop and that live TV shot that we're going to have, that's about all we really need now. I mean, we've need. got everything that we need. And so. then your phone for everything else. Phone for everything <laughs> else. Yep. Awesome. That well, worked. thank you so much for joining us. Do you, do you have your own social for any videography? Not yet for KOM. Or? This is more freelance now. But okay. Yeah. Well, regardless, look forward to that. Make sure to check Doug out on Facebook and his YouTube channel. You can subscribe, like, follow. There's a little like bell thing. Little I, bell thing. I just got the little bell thing and got your YouTube lives. Yeah. So make sure you're uh, checking out our podcast on all different platforms. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, KOAM Plus, and obviously a huge thank to our sponsors, Freeman Health System, uh, Grand Lake Casino, and Derail Commodity. And we've got a couple episodes left and uh, hopefully we'll see you there. If you're a weekend warrior who likes to go, 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 don't let pain put the brakes on your pace. When you need help with an injury that keeps you from moving, you want an orthopedic team with a proven track record. Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine is nationally recognized and were recently named a 2018 CareCheck's number one hospital in market and top 10% hospital in state for hip fracture repair. Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the experience you need to keep pace with life. Thank you for listening to KOAM Presents. For the latest content in local news, weather, and sports, please go to koamnewsnow.com.